Hello again. Welcome back to Outer Wilds. I have uh, lost track at this point of which loop we must be starting. I want to say 18, but it might be 19. Let me see if I can refresh my memory. By looking at my my last video, which should hopefully have it labeled. It must be 21. I believe we're going into loop 21. Not entirely sure, though. Anyway, time to wake up. We were just off uh, last session exploring Giant's Deep, trying to find the last few island locations there. Let's take just a minute and talk to our friends on Timber Hearth. <laughs> it's funny how you can slowly say more and more blunt things. Lucky I'm in a time loop. Good morning. So nice to see you there. So, once again, I don't believe, uh... <laughs> I don't believe I can really talk to Slate about much that's going on. Gabbro seems to be the only one stuck in the loop with us. Just want to quickly go back through everyone here. Hey, it's you! You're blasting off today! Mm-hmm. For like the 21st time. So most of them don't seem to have any awareness or new dialogue beyond what you can say, and then they think you're crazy. Like, hey, I'm gonna die in a supernova. And they're like, oh, you crazy, crazy hatchling. I've always been a little, uh, curious. Not sure if it's safe to be curious about it. It does look like I could fit down there. I'm wondering if the, uh, the geyser blast actually has power, like if it can shoot you off. How can I safely find out? If I had my, like right now I can't, prevent myself from dying if that shoots me into the air. But I wonder if I can just climb the old tower here. This might be a silly idea. <laughs> Welcome! Hey, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Quite a way to enter the stream. All right, let me try something totally crazy here. I'm going to grab my jetpack. Ha-ha! And then if it does blast me off into space, hopefully I can, uh... do something about it. If I time it exceedingly well, at least. We all know that's my forte. Time Timing things well. <laughs> I've been up there. It looks like a... I don't know. Maybe I have. Maybe that leans around. We'll go check it out. Anyway, focusing on the geyser first. There she blows. Alright, it does power you out quite a bit. Nice. I seem to be on the uh, museum now, I guess. Okay, so it can fire you up. I wonder if there's a location you can only get to by doing that. Though I wouldn't necessarily think so. Let's see what else it can do. Eek! If I just drop down when the geyser isn't on. Aha! Okay, 
there is something in the core of Timber Hearth. Some sort of crevice that looks to be coming at me. Yes, cannot enter the crevice as it is coming at you. What are my other options? Someone's been having quite the party down here, it seems. Okay, so there's a geyser hole there that's quite narrow, and then there's a wider hole up, which I don't know what that would lead to. And then there's some side passages. Aha, that looks like it's accepting visitors rather than pushing out. That looks likely. Let's try this. Something's happening. Oh! <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Ooh, excuse my microphone there. One second. Jeez. Behave. Behave yourself. Okay. So now I'm up down here at, uh... The Far Geysers. However, it looked like there was more to that passage. It, I just caught an upward draft here. Let me see if I can get past it. Yeah, it should still keep going this way. Oh, hitting another geyser. Same situation. I think we can go further down that passage. Uh huh. There's a big crevice that is accepting. <laughs> there must be better terms for this. An outgoing channel. It appears to be my only option, but let me turn my flashlight on here. I guess there is uh, holes above these other geysers if necessary, but I'm guessing this is the way to go. this? After closer observation, mining site 2A wouldn't be safe for the native life dwelling in some of this cave's pools. So, unfortunately, we'll have to mine one of the other sites. There are a few other cave sites that look promising. What about site 2B? It shares similar formations and strata. This sounds promising. Will you and your mentor investigate? If mining site 2B proves safe for this native species, we'll move our work there. Site 2B is safe. Coleus says we'll continue to monitor our activity and its effect on life here. So I'm guessing site 2B is that other waterfall channel where they did mine a little bit, but it's on the other side of the planet from us. On the opposite hand, new life! This species is semi-aquatic and very hardy. Sorry about all the whooshing. <laughs> the ecosystem here is quite robust, so I believe they'll thrive in the long run. Be cautious near the pools if you visit 2A to meet them. I was watching them once during a rest, and the hours escaped from me. They're fascinating. I wonder what their fourth eye does. They remind me of a subterranean species that my mentor Malore once told me about, from when our clan used to travel across this universe. I imagine she would have enjoyed these life forms greatly. Alright, so there's... Oh, that's so cute. This is us. Little timber... Timber Harthians. Coming out of the muck. And, uh, and there's the... Nomai! Curious Nomai watching us. Alright. 
goodness me, the whooshing. I'm going this way. Aha, cool. That is actually the mining site we were talking about. Right up there is where the waterfall comes down to meet it. So I, I believe this is site 2B, just above. And what is out here? Ooh. Trippy. And we're back. All right. Thinking this is town. Fantastic. Okay. So now we know what's down uh, in the core of Timber Hearth. I wonder if I'm missing anything else. I didn't give a completely thorough look. Refuel all my goodies. I give a completely thorough look to a uh, timber hearth. I thought I found most of the locations, like the... There's the mining site, there is the dark bramble seed, there's the geysers we know about. What else am I missing? There's the dark bramble seed. Big, big geysers. That must be... I keep seeing this thing winging off in the corner of my eye. I think there's like a satellite camera in camp. And this must be that actual satellite. Which is so cool that it's a physical thing and not just ghost pictures, you know? They didn't have to necessarily go to the trouble of modeling it and making it actually fly across the city, but they did, and I deeply respect that. Alright, so there's the upper lip of town where the ghost matter and the zero-g cave is. I don't think we need to go in there. That one I was curious about is totally that platform that loops around. We have been there before, so no worries there. But I feel like I'm missing a side... Oh, that is not the Dark Bramble. Hang on a second. What is this? Sure. Just about there ought to do it. Unidentified signal nearby. Aha, uh -huh, it must be quantum. The Grove Shard. Okay. Little hidden crater grove. This is lovely, and it's moving around, obviously. It's a quantum shard. Okay, what is it trying to teach me, though? What's this? In the ancient glade... The quiet shade, it's always dark across old bark. It's always dark in the ancient glade across old bark, the quiet shade. It totally switched. The quiet shade, it's always dark in the ancient glade across old bark. It's always dark, cross old bark, the quiet shade in the ancient glade. It's becoming a Danny K bit, and I deeply love it. This, uh, this is awesome. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do with it. Yeah, I definitely don't want, uh, spoilers, if at all possible. So sorry. Huh. It's always dark. I don't even know, like, what, what the ideal form of this would be. I must need to know more information. But it's like there must be a genuine way to read it that gives an instruction or something. Or they are all for instructions. What else is down here? It 
looks like we could probably get back down into the geyser system, but I'm guessing we may have uh, randomly made our way up here, depending on which geysers we're firing. There's probably not a reason to go back down. But I can amend that. So there is another quantum shard on Timber Hearth, and it has some sort of weird quantum poem that goes along with it. Why can I not, uh... I'm stuck. And I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Okay. I must have just wedged myself in a tree real good. Okay, we haven't been back to the Addle Rock in a while. I don't know if there's a uh, huge reason to... The one thing I was wanting to go back to at the end of the last session is Giant's Deep to see that the natural arch island we first landed on one more time. Let me just return here briefly since we're right nearby and refresh my memory on this thing. If I'm remembering correctly, this is like the first signal locator the Nomai built to try to find the Eye of the Universe. But they later said that it like did not have enough power or something. So it's supposed to be able to locate this, the eye, but it just spins and spins. Because the eye is everywhere, but I guess it could successfully locate, say, Giant's Deep. Yeah. Quite the sound. Okay. <laughs> so you can locate Giant's Deep. You can locate... I don't know what this one is, I guess. Let me check. Sun Station, maybe? Like the sun itself? That would be Brittle Hollow. Yes. So it can locate the sun. It can locate Giant's Deep and Brittle Hollow. But it's not powerful enough to locate the eye. Just wanted to refresh my memory on that. Perfect. Okay, with our last remaining minutes, let's uh, run back to that natural arch island on Giant's Deep. Is that the quantum moon right there? Let me check. If I have it in a picture, maybe it doesn't move. It's what we were learning from the Tower of Quantum Knowledge on Giant's Deep. Ah, jeez, I came in a little hot there. Smaller than I... Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Yeah, everything is damaged. All right, let's get out there. I, I seemingly lost my picture, too. Ah. Get back. That was a bad landing. Okay, what was the last thing? I thought there were four that I broke. Hmm? Maybe not. That's not what I would prefer to see. So we have another... No, my... I wonder... Which... If this is the Quantum Moon, I know Solanum was making her first pilgrimage to the Quantum Moon. I really hope that's not Solanum. But I'm not sure who else it would be. And there's seemingly no logs. Wait a minute, it's facing up now. 
it was it was face down a second ago. Is it? Oh my goodness! Is she quantumly dying over and over again? That's really unfortunate. Like every time you look away, a different version of her dead body is here. So there is. There are multiple iterations of her death scattered about. Would be my guess. That's so sad. This looks very uh, nice, like natural and uh, foliagey for being a quantum moon. I thought it was going to be a lot uh, spookier than this, but this is strangely peaceful. Whoa, that just appeared out of nowhere. All right. Now we have some recordings. I am here. After watching it wander the skies, this is Solanum. After watching it wander the skies for so long, I am about to stand for the first time on the quantum moon. As expected, my shuttle has landed at the moon's south pole. I will make the remainder of my journey on foot. I'm guessing that's also where we are, though if it can quantum jump around, I'm not sure. We don't know why the quantum moon always welcomes its visitors at the South Pole, just that this is true. As a child, I considered such unknown sinister. We've read this before, haven't we? But not here. This must be one of the shuttles we brought back at, like, Ember Twin, I guess. Because I know we've read this. I am ready. The universe is, and we are. That's, like, my favorite line from all of this. So this is actually where this shuttle comes from, here on the quantum moon. I have to guess. And if I look away from it, it jumps. Okay. And so do the trees. You can see the trees coming in and out of my sideline. That was something big that I just lost again. Okay. I saw a big glowy rune for a second. What is this? I'm getting that tingly feeling. That you should probably speak to a physician about. Okay, that's awesome. So you can see the quantum moon is currently at Timber Hearth. Sounds like I may be running out of time here. All right, lights on. What do we got? What can I learn in one minute? Recall the rule of quantum entanglement. Ah. Uh, <laughs> you have recalled the rule of quantum imaging. Okay. Recall the rule of the sixth location. So I know one of the rules I need to know. But I don't know the rule of quantum entanglement, and I don't know where the sixth location is. How do I mess with this? Like, it's not a button. Like, this I can turn on and off. But these I can't move. So there must be another way to move the moon. We have the Twins, Timber Hearth, Brittle Hollow, Giant's Deep, Dark Bramble, the Eye of the Universe must be the sixth location they're talking about. So that I need to know that location, and then I need to quantum entangle myself there while using quantum imaging. In some sense. I'm definitely going to need to figure that out. But the universe is ending. I love you all.
<laughs> see you in another loop, brother. I see that in the chat. I get that reference. I may have had a massive crush on Desmond when I was a child. It's no big deal. It... Who doesn't to this day? Okay, so we never did make it to uh, our natural arch island on Giant Steep. Thanks, Quantum Moon. But goodness, we learned uh, some nice stuff there. A quick peek at some later quantum entanglement we'll get involved in. Let's get suited up again. And as finally promised, let's go to Giant Steep. I'm slowly getting a feel for, like, the actual location of the planets when you start. Like, I can kind of know where to point myself in space now. To get to Giant Steep, if I catch it just at the beginning of a loop. But I'm gonna need to figure that out for, say, the twins and the sun and all that good stuff. At some point here. I'm gonna go ahead and abort that in case it's sending us right into the probe cannon. So I'm hoping we can find a tornado and this island. Let's see here. There it is. I think this is the first place we ever actually landed here, but I would like to go through it again with a little bit more knowledge. It's probably not the safest place for my ship, as it will be sucked up by a tornado, but hey, that's fine. Ah, <laughs> I do that so often now. Indecisively jump right back into my ship. Okay, so I think we're going down. Though it is awesome that there is a teleporter here on Giant's Deep. I don't know exactly how to use it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're in space. We're in space again. I'm just going to run over here. In case we land... Oh, and there is a nice little landing spot. Won't that be nice? <laughs> Should have landed a little sooner than that. Now I don't have any headlights, but hey. Landing gear, headlights. You stay, I'll be right back. Daddy loves you. Ah, oh, darn, I always forget the gravity is higher on Giant Steep. <laughs> that didn't do me much good. Let's go full burst. All right, so door is broken, yes. Statue workshop. There is one of these statues in question. There goes the construction yard. if there was ghost matter around this spot. Or if it was another island on Giant's Deep, I'm thinking of. Always worth it to be safe. Okay, so I don't think we ever got down there is where I'd really like to, uh, to go. We read a little bit of this, but how do I get down there? This, I'm assuming, will just hold you still should you be sucked off the uh, surface. Won't that be nice? No, 
That must just lead back up to the... teleporter, I think. And maybe it's another situation like the... white hole or whatever that I can't actually get there from here. I need to either teleport or wait until it's in some other location. Typically, when I cannot find my way into an area, that is what I'm missing. But it feels like there should be some way down from this village. Let me just read these again. Going to test the memory statues. What if we didn't use the door and snuck in the other way? That's right. It's I really want to see the test, but it's a huge risk. Risk. So, like, what is the other way? We didn't use the door and snuck in the other way. I guess it could be, like, underwater, just not yet to the current that protects the core. Like, it might not be that deep, but still underwater? Let's check it. sure if I can get back from over there, but I think I can. Gravity's just very high to be making uh, strange leaps. There's also some sort of cave over here that I can't tell if I've already been to. Let me check that before we jump back in the ship. I must have just been seeing this darker rock weird. I thought that was a small alcove there. Never mind. So, I'm just going to give a quick search below the surface. See if there's like a cave or something there. Otherwise, we'll keep looking for this secret other way. And can I land this anywhere? <laughs> we'll just sneak it on in there. Won't that be nice? Wow, that broke everything when we hit the uh, hit the ground again. Okay, but we are where we need to be. Yeesh. Ship hull breach, darn. That just broke completely, so I cannot leave Giant's Deep now. That's the first time that's ever happened. Interesting. I now have no ship. Yarrow, would you kindly step back so Daz is closest to the statue? When pairing, the statue will choose whoever is in closest proximity. Good to know. That must be how we were chosen. See how its eyes have opened? That tells us the statue is paired with Daz. Now, no matter where he is in the, star, in the star system, Daz's statue will record his memories and send them to the Ash Twin Project. We are finally getting somewhere. This is extraordinary sculpting work, Phlox. It really is. He has outdone himself again, hasn't he? And now that we have our first successful pairing, we can test my memory storage prototype. Each statue will send a single Nomai's memories to his or her own storage unit within Ash Twin. Each storage unit will be equipped with a mask, the statue's counterpart, which will be able to send those stored memories back to the corresponding Nomai. So that must be what we're seeing when we go through those cycles and we see our memories uh, shoved back into us, or whatever it is. And we see that weird, flat, metallic mask. It is actually the other piece of the statue, and not just ceremonial or something. So yes, here's a little diagram. Your memories as a living Nomai get transferred to your paired statue, which pairs to whoever's closest in proximity. Those memories go to the mask, 
which is in the Ash Twin Project. We still don't know quite what that does, but it must be, like, either outside of time or outside of space-time in order to provide your memories 22 minutes to the past. So, your memories to the statue, to the mask, to you. What else do we have here? That's just a tornado platform. Good, good. We have masks being carved. Sadly, uh, still being carved when the interloper hit. Or exploded, as the case may be. This must be the other side of the door. I guess we can successfully open it from here. Lovely. And I just gotta go back around this way. Good morning. So nice to see you all there. In the chat. So I definitely live here now. I'm not sure uh, how much time we have left. This was pretty early in a loop to lose my ship entirely. We'll see what our other options are. Alright, we have an Ash Twin Projection Stone. Let's take a peek, physically. There are those masks. And yeah, I think we've seen this before, but I just had no idea what to make of it. It really does look like it's inside a black hole, doesn't it? And there's some sort of object there, like a pillar or a key or something blocking the uh, stars. So these masks, it must be that... Uh, huh. I was just gonna say, I thought two of them were activated last time I was in here, which I would guess now would be me and Gabbro are still paired to statues. But this looks like there's three of them, doesn't it? So does that mean there are three living beings paired to statues? And who would be the third besides me and Gabbro? Huh. It's so nice to actually know what those are now. We're, we're getting there. Alright, let's see what the text says. I have installed the masks inside the Ash Twin Project, Flox. They look beautiful, although I do feel as though I'm being observed. It's comforting to know the statues will not pair until the project succeeds. Interesting. Otherwise, I imagine the experience would be hard to endure. That's crazy. Okay. Let me finish up before I go off on a tangent. Ideally, they'll only need to activate once the project succeeds as a safety measure. However, the statues will also activate in the event of equipment failure. So which one, which one did it? Hmm. They will? Why is that? Well, if anything goes wrong with the Ash Twin Project, the statues and their masks will make us aware of the situation and enable us to fix it. Otherwise, it would be possible for us to remain permanently unaware of the problem. I hadn't thought of that. What a profoundly horrific fate that would be. So it really does sound... I have no idea how I'm supposed to get up there with this kind of gravity. We'll figure it out. <laughs> That's weird. So what I'm assuming that means... If the statues don't activate to send your memories 22 minutes back into the past, unless it succeeds, or unless it uh, has a massive failure... Then it's like, did it successfully find the eye? We were just seeing those 9,318,000 attempts. Oh yeah, I was just thinking, if, if we get picked up in the next three minutes by a tornado, if this island get lift, gets lifted up into space, I will have zero G for a second in order to get across there. That's probably what they're having me wait for. So I just hope it happens. It might be happening now. Alright, so I'm gonna wait until I'm in space. Zero G. 
Then I'm gonna head to this so that I don't die. Him. So that I don't die. Till we land. And hopefully I'll still have a minute left. Alright. We've landed. And we're good. I'm curious. Is sending a bean's memories back in time the same as sending the bean itself back in time? As an example, if we were to send my memories back in time, is that the same as sending me? Not my physical body, but, you know, my es essence. I imagine they are two different actions. Wouldn't both actions be effectively the same? Well, suppose that time was being rewritten. I believe this is different than receiving memories from what is effectively the future. But isn't the end result identical in either case? <laughs> yeah, kind of. But, uh, but kind of not. Okay, so now we just have to wait. Until I suffocate, really. I guess I can't get back into the ship to access my... Oxygen tank, is my thought. So that's going to be a bit of a problem. Maybe I can, though, because this whole side fell off. <laughs> but is it in there? Here we go. Get down. It's time to get down. I'm guessing it's no longer... There, okay. Refuel jetpack. But that doesn't have oxygen. Okay, so it's just the inside of my ship. If I could get to, like, my... potted plant, say. But that's only jetpack fuel. I can't get up there. Let me go back around. It's possible I could get to an island with some trees here if I just swam out, but... It's also possible that it would be more efficient to just go for the next loop. As I believe Giant's Deep is now fairly taken care of. So yeah, no oxygen from my little potted plant. Oh well. I can still buckle in, at least. That's nice. <laughs> so, I suppose I shall die bravely, rather than sitting in my little chair. Let's head out the front door. And I'm slowly, slowly trying to piece this together here. So it seems like we read last time... There we go. I've run out of oxygen. <laughs> we read last time that they only had enough power, or they were only confident that the orbital probe cannon could fire once. They were very worried that they would have to effectively, like, get it right the first try for something that needs 9,318,000 tries. Or however many it ended up taking. So they seem to have developed this time loop specifically so that the probe could fire. It would then tell someone during that time if it found the eye of the universe. And if it did find the eye, everyone's statues would activate at the same time to give everyone the information of where the eye of the universe is. So that no matter who got it, the Nomai would know. And so I thought that the time loop was kind of an accident or a, a bad thing that we needed to stop happening. It seems like it's very much just part of their plan to find the eye here. That they wouldn't have had enough time otherwise. Let's get right back up into space here. There's still a couple of pieces of it I need to figure out, but a larger plan is definitely coming into view. So we got some good stuff on Timber Hearth. I think Giant's Deep is fairly well explored at this point, especially now that we got to the core. Here's that quantum moon again. Which I am very curious about, but it's like, where can I learn that rule of quantum entanglement? 
And we still have to go to the Dark Bramble down there, too. So it's like, I know there's more to do on the Quantum Moon, but I don't think I'm ready for it just yet. And I should be man enough to admit, admit that. So here I am. Let's run back to Ember Twin. I kind of feel like if there was going to be another tower of quantum knowledge anywhere, it must be on the Twins. So let's just take a peek. See if we can see anything. There's an escape pod, there's the high energy lab, teleporter, a gravity cannon. Not seeing anything that screams Tower of Quantum Knowledge. But another thing I'd like to do on uh, Ember Twin here is be able to get to it before it fully fills up with ash from the other planet and see if there's anything here in the core. It's already starting to fill itself out there. So like this is that little oxygen bubble that leads to the sunken city. Or maybe it's not the sunken city. The sun-lit city? I, I forget. Something like that. But I'm not necessarily seeing a tower of quantum knowledge. Nope. I thought I was above some nice land. Apparently I'm not. How about now? Okay. Just take a look in here. Because there's got to be something in this canyon. So it's like, I think that might be where we can call Solanum's shuttle back. I can never remember which one's which. There's like two of them. So it's so cool that we actually got to see the other side of that on the surface of the quantum moon itself. I'm sure not getting anywhere down this canyon hike, but it's pretty. I'm enjoying it. As far as I'm aware, this door to the high-energy lab has never been open, if it can open. It's weird that there's such an obvious tractor beam right behind all that ghost matter. It's like... The fact that it's placed there makes me think eventually there will be a way to safely walk through ghost matter. But I don't know if that's a red herring of a thought. So I don't think we've ever been in the high energy lab. It's another one of those, ah, the door is broken, go around. And we have not yet found our way around. I need to spend a loop working on that. Because I'm sure a lot of juicy information is hiding back there. Let's check the other end of this canyon momentarily. Or more of a cave on this side, perhaps? Looking promising. That doesn't look good at all. Alright, let's check this way.
past the spikes. Aha, here's a quantum shard at the very least. Cave shard, I guess we've... Ah, oh, I guess it did just identify it. I was going to say, it seemed to have a title immediately, but it's giving me the signal identified thing up there. All right, Malore. Coleus is missing. He vanished from the lake bed cave. The one at the bottom of the dry lake bed at the North Pole several days ago, and we're unable to find any trace of him. I don't know how much air he had when he disappeared. I beg any friend reading this, help us recover Coleus. This rock is very familiar. Did you travel here, my sedimentary friend? Because your unique color and texture appears identical to a rock I met earlier. Wasn't this same rock fragment in the cave we found at the bottom of the dry lake bed at the North Pole? We plan to re-examine the northern lake bed cave. Maybe our friendly rock will meet us down there. An update. Malore and I went back to the lake bed cave and observed this rock again. Sometimes it's there and sometimes it isn't. That means this rock wanders like the quantum moon does. How curious. All right, yeah, it's gone again. Eesh. And apparently the cactuses also move. That's a problem. So yeah, always watch where you're going. And uh, you'll be fine. So there's a, a dry lake bed on the North Pole. Let's go. I think that's instantly what we're looking for here. Quantum shard, dry lake bed, North Pole. I spy a Kyle Thomas. Why, hello, sir. Welcome to the party. Welcome to the wilds. No need to feel as though you need to remain dressed. Please, get comfortable. Alright, so I'm always having a hard time. When I'm in a ship, I don't seem to have my little north-south indicator map. Whatever that is. I'm not sure what other things are at poles, like... What is the technical pole of, of Ember Twin? So I'm just looking physically for what appears to be a dry lake bed, is all. Not sure about that. That could be... anything. Maybe I can just land and check the map on foot and then get back in here. It's probably what I should be doing. Instead of just blindly looking. Okay. There we go. So I'm basically at the exact equator. I can never remember which one's north and which one's south, but I'm going to go for red. Assuming... Which, to remind myself, is this way. <coughs> to the left. I am just not sure. And I'm not sure if it still looks like a lake bed, what with half the planet cracked in half, filling with ash. Let's give another look here. In fact, I'm just going to sit dead in the middle of this thing. This is the only thing I can assume would even be remotely like a lake bed. Let's check. It is just about the North Pole, I'm guessing. It's either north or south. So is there some quantum shard at the bottom of this that I needed to get here quicker before it filled up with ash, or is it still in play? Uh, 
Not sure if I should just take my ship down there at this point. Rather than losing it. So there are like some stairs down here. But it could be I already missed my chance. And should run right for this at the beginning of the next loop. Because there's the stairs going ever deeper. So th that is my best guess, at least. That the quantum entanglement likely below this uh, rather impressive spire. But I'll have to catch it next time. Seems to be the idea. That being the case, I'm going to run back to Giant's Deep again. You just can't keep me away. And spend some of our remaining minutes uh, seeing if Gabbro has anything new to say. I have talked to Chert. Do you want me to talk to him again? Gabro's island looked like, but it should be the one with the campfire, though he's not at the campfire. He's right there, in his hammock. All right. Thank you, Tree. I appreciate that hug. That was nice. Talking to Gabriel. Be something lovely to figure out by myself. I'm, I'm very sorry. I appreciate the suggestions, but just trying to let this slowly unfurl itself here. Oh, it's okay, Gabriel. It's okay. How do you stay so calm in the face of repeated impending death? Deep breaths. No, seriously, I, I meditate. Want me to teach you? It'll be the next loop before you know it. Ah, uh, yes. Absolutely. Okay, close your eyes. I, <laughs> I read that wrong, I think. I, I, I assumed he was saying, I'll teach you now, but for some reason you're not going to know it until the next loop. But I think what he meant to say was, if I teach you now, it'll be the next loop before you know it. Like, this will end the loop. But it's like, okay, I'll, I'll still do that, sure. So that's interesting. If I have to, if I'm stuck in, say, a cave filling with sand, I can now meditate my way to the next loop. Is, I'm assuming, the idea. So if I get stuck somewhere, shipless, etc., I will now have an exit plan. I appreciate that greatly, Gabbro. Thank you. So there may still be some new stuff I have to go back and, and speak to Gabbro about. I'm sure there will be. But I'm grateful to know meditation now. That's awesome. Okay, so now it's the start of a new loop. I'm immediately going to go back and see if we can get to that lake bed. Now here's that part where I don't know where the sun starts. <laughs> I know where Giant's Deep and Brittle Hollow are, but where is the Ember, Ember Twin? There we go. Oh, 
Okay. So I'm just gonna head right to the bottom of this little pit here. Though maybe taking my ship all the way down isn't gonna work. Let's put it here. Oh, or maybe it's stuck down here forever with me. That's fine, too. <laughs> Gotten my ship wedged in more uncomfortable situations than I can count this, uh, this session. Alright, try there. Down the stairs. Deeper. And there's a little pit. Okay. Nice little maze that I kind of want to pull my scout launcher out for, just in case. Just in case they're being tricky. Okay, dead end. Okay, so this is filling up in here. I can get past it. And up. This is interesting. Okay, seemingly the end. Love to get a peek uh, on the other side of there, but okay, sure. Hopefully, fine. About halfway down the oxygen uh, list. And there are spiky things everywhere. Aha! One of them moved, though. We must be getting close to the quantum thing, if things are shifting around. So it looks like the stalagmites and the cacti can sort of shift places. And then sometimes they're not there at all. There's the rock. Hello, my friend. Quantum fluctuations. All right. Huh. There is a... a button. Two buttons. Oh, just one. <laughs> a quantum button. One second. I'll be right back here.
Okay, so sorry. And there is my meditation option. I was wondering how to activate that. It's in the start menu. Alright, what does this say? If you've come here to look for Coleus, this is where we were when he vanished. He's been missing for two days now. Your strange wandering rock friend is here, though Coleus isn't. Coleus and I observed this unusual looking rock shard, and several smaller rocks in at least two other caverns. I'm unsure if this is relevant. What happened before Coleus disappeared? We were examining the different rocks. I recall Coleus standing on the largest one, the wandering rock. Okay, so he was on it. I was taking notes, and then my lantern died. When I lit it again, Coleus and the rock were both gone, so they couldn't see him. It got dark, and nobody was perceiving the rock. And I guess because Coleus was standing on it, he also moved? Okay, so what does this switch do? Make sure there's no other logs there. Just checking. Aha, it just turns off the light. Okay. And then my flashlight will also need to be off, obviously. So when I click this off, it's gone. So, I want the light in the cave off so that I can control it. Jump on here, turn my flashlight off. And I'm in a different cave. That must be the rule of quantum entanglement. Anything entangled with a quantum shard moves with the quantum shard. I'm rather impressed with that form of teleportation. That is super cool. Coleus, how curious. This rock took me with it to a new location. I wonder why this happened. Curious, but also alarming, this new cave appears to lack an entrance or exit. Also, the rock that brought me here disappeared while I wasn't watching. The wandering rock has returned. Never before have I been so delighted to see a sedimentary specimen. I wonder if I myself became quantum briefly when the rock carried me here. This seems the clearest explanation. Hypothesis, if the rock can bring me here, it can also carry me out. My hypothesis was correct. I can travel on this rock as long as I'm not observing my surroundings, meaning I must be in complete darkness. I'm going to bring my mentor here to see this. Malore is here now, too. We theorize when a conscious being is in contact with a quantum object and ceases to act as an observer, explaining the need for darkness, the being can become entangled with that quantum object, and they move together. Friends, Coleus has discovered a new quantum rule. He has also promised me he'll never vanish again, even if he does learn something useful from it. That is incredibly cool. I really like this power, and I think I I understand what I might need to do at the Quantum Moon now. Though I still don't know the sixth location. It's the last piece I'm still missing. Let's stand on here. Clicky clicky. And now I'm in a new cave again. Friends, if you find any sign of Coleus, I implore you to tell me. He vanished without a trace during our research trip and has been ever since. Some of us from the Sunless City are here to help search for Coleus. Can you tell us more about your expedition? You have my gratitude, Burr. Coleus and I were studying the cave's geology. We hoped to learn more about a unique and wandering rock that visits several different caves in the area. Where was young Coleus lost, Malore? He disappeared in the cave at the bottom of the dry lake bed at the North Pole. It happened in an instant without warning. I turned away from Coleus to examine a sample, and when I turned back, he simply wasn't there anymore. He had a limited supply of air, Anana, I'm afraid for him. 
hypothesis, we will learn more by examining the northern lake bed cave, where Coleus disappeared. Search quickly, everyone. We have no time to squander. Well, we kind of have a lot of time to squander, but... Understand, that might not have been the case 400 years ago. I'm also getting a little low on oxygen myself. Let's hope there's something in this cave. Ah, there is a way out. Where does this lead? Looks like it's nearby a chert. So if I could get up there, I could get some oxygen, and there's not much gravity. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> Just missed it. Heading back. I was hoping my little boots would skim the sand there. Hello again, shirt. Good to see you. Goodness, it's you. I have a question for you. I've spotted something. I found no my writing about the quantum moon. Well, everyone loves a good mystery, don't they? I think we already asked him about that. Yes, we did. What else do we have for us? I have a question for you. I found something else. Found no my writing about a hidden planet. Yes, he definitely told us that as well. Just saying hi. I think we did get all those options. I must not be far enough along in the cycle to see anything new. Ash Twin is about halfway down, looks like. So, I would be really curious to go back to the Quantum Moon at this point, but I just don't know what they need in terms of the sixth location. I don't know how to find that. I'm hoping it will become clear. And that thing is so strange. There's like a little orbital space station on the sun itself. I have no idea how you could get there because it's orbiting faster than any other object I've seen. So your ship can't keep up with it. You would need to like intersect it at the exact right time. So I'm not sure how I want to spend the rest of this cycle, which will likely be our last. My ship is down here. I guess I'd better try to retrieve it. Especially before it gets covered with sand. Save our friend here. Our good friend ship. Okay, so let me take a minute and look at the ship's log. We'll see what else it can unlock for us. Yes, they have a picture of those credentials, too, or coordinates, not credentials. Lake Bed K, perfect. So we are in the Quantum Vein, which seems to be the purple section. We are making some nice progress, but the sixth location is what we need. What is the rumor? To explore the sixth location, the shrine on the quantum moon must be on the moon's north pole. So it's like every time you land on the moon, it takes you to the south pole. How do you get access to the north pole? That's what we'll have to figure out first. And that seems to be the only secret. You just need to physically move the shrine, the place with the glowing glyphs, to the north pole. So you need to be able to perceive it at the north pole. 
So I'm guessing if I can land on the quantum moon, there must be a way to move it to a location that allows me to access the north pole of it. So I'm just going to have to look around a little bit. I probably don't have enough time left in this cycle to really make a go of it, but let's try to get the quantum moon to spawn in. Some way, somehow. There it is, at Giant's Deep. So it's like it's probably possible to get it to come closer to you by continuing to look around, but let's just, while we have it in sight, go for it. And I don't know if you need to take a picture of it in order to land on it. It kind of seems like when you hit that, the atmosphere is so foggy and cloudy that you can't see when you're in it. It's like total darkness. So it seems like taking a picture of it now could lock it in place. Jeez, every time I come in way, way too hot. <laughs> I don't know how to prevent that. Besides being a better pilot. Okay, let's see if we can find the shrine again. After we repair the cockpit. Very important. Here's our friend again. I'm going to call Solanum, having no better... better plan. So, when it's around Giant's Deep, it's a completely different moon. You know how I was curious last time that it was all trees, which I, w I wasn't expecting. Now it's all water, which I also wasn't expecting. So the moon takes the component of the planet it's orbiting around and becomes a different moon entirely for each planet. So this is the water moon, I'm guessing. I just need to get it to reveal those glyphs to me again. Probably not the best place to stand. Come on. Any time now. So sorry to make you sick with all the spinning. There. Finally, finally. So, now that we know the secret of quantum entanglement, can we turn off the lights? Like, close this. And it would be totally dark in here. And at that point, it is now at Dark Bramble, yes! So it moves when you're in total darkness. So what does the Dark Bramble moon look like? I wonder. Completely different, alien, and strange. Huh, that's weird. There is a jellyfish quantum object on this moon. I will want to come back here and we should investigate each moon individually. However... I think I want it... <laughs> Let me, let me look here. I guess we need to know which physical moon lets you access the North Pole. Let me see. I'm going to go to the North Pole. Maybe this one does. It seems to have some sort of root structure at its North Pole, too. 
And maybe that's the problem? Like, maybe every quantum moon has an obstruction that prevents you from getting to the North Pole. And you can't go back out of the atmosphere like you can get over the tornado on Giant's Deep or whatever. Because that would move the quantum moon. It would quantum moon it. So yeah, there must be one location where you can actually get to the North Pole in order to put the shrine there. Is my best guess. And it could be Dark Bramble, and I just haven't found the entrance. But that is so interesting. So this is going to take a little finagling. It sure doesn't look like I can get in there on Dark Bramble, so I'm guessing this isn't the right one. Alright, so now I'm just trying to get the shrine to pop back into play here. Quantum shrine. Let's see. Close this up. And where's it going to take us next? Uh, Brittle Hollow. I guess I'd better look at it. I'm not getting a good feeling from Brittle Hollow, but that's completely unrelated to the truth of the game. But my mind says, nah, it's definitely not at the North Pole of Brittle Hollow. And it of course is. <laughs> you can make it to the North Pole of Brittle Hollow. Okay. Thanks, Mind. Appreciate that. So if I can get the shrine to appear here, can I then make it to the sixth location? Mm-hmm. 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 I'm a little scared, actually. I am a little scared. So all it said was, you need to be on the North Pole. The shrine needs to be on the North Pole. And then, I'm assuming, I travel. Timber hearth. That's not what I would expect. Dark bramble. And I'm probably not on the North Pole anymore after having traveled twice. Hmm. Okay, so there's something else weird about that. I'm just going to do a couple of quick ones here. Okay. We're at the eye. Is that an accurate way to do this? Am I crazy? Oh, it's all quantum moon stuff now. That's interesting. Okay. So I'm still at the North Pole. There's seemingly only one direction I can go. Okay. I think we might be on to something. We're being guided down the corridor. Gently, I dare say. Oh no, I hear the music. Oh no. Oh no, I hear the music. We gotta run. <laughs> oh my goodness, what is that? What is that? Ah! You're alive! Solanum, I love you. I'm so happy to see that. Hello there. Uh, where are we? You cannot speak. Okay, I, I'm surprised too. Okay. Uh, Quantum Moon, me, I of the universe, you, 
identify, explain. Oh, I wish I didn't have only a minute left. This is insane. <laughs> okay, explain. Uh, explain. Explain me. That's what's most important here. I imagine your purpose here is the same as mine, to learn about and to find the eye of the universe. I'm unsure how you arrived here, however. Perhaps you came from another star system, as my clan originally did. Mmm. 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 <laughs> there it goes. Oh, wow. Okay. That's definitely the coolest thing we've seen this entire time. There is a living Nomai. Solanum lives. And also dies? Question mark? Solanum lives in one single quantum state. And regrettably, I'm also out of time for the day. Like, I, I cannot believe it. That is our last cycle. We can fit in. But immediately, the next time I'm able to play, I promise you, I will be racing back to the quantum moon. We will try to put it right back on the North Pole, get back there, and we'll have our dear, dear friend, Solanum, explain the rest to us. What a cliffhanger. Thank you guys very much for hanging out with me here. I am buzzing with excitement. I cannot wait to go back and talk to Solanum. And I hope uh, you too are excited. I will work as hard as I can to be back in your company and your good graces to make use of that excitement next session. Until then, enjoy some marshmallows, huh? Be gentle with yourself. It's going to be all right. Okay. Smooches for now. I'll see you space travelers next time. Mwah. <laughs>